scattering length drops out of your system, you have this so-called universal regime, the unitarity, whatever that people like to talk about. So th these are all, this has been nicely realized and studied in, in many experiments um, around the world. All right, so, so okay, so the subject of today is, is of course, the spin imbalanced Fermi gas. So now, essentially, okay, so here's my interaction axis, and I stick on another one axis, which is the polarization, or the, the difference in the spin populations in my system. So, um, okay, so why bother? Um, so basically, this, this system is sort of a sort of a canonical system that has many, uh, well, potentially many um, connections with, with other fields in physics, so for example, the superconductors or, or even excitons, where you have um, bound states between electron hole pairs in a semiconductor. Um, I like to think of this system as perhaps one of the simplest frustrated Fermi systems. So where, you know, by having this excess spin in your system, you sort of frustrate the pairing um, in, in your Fermi system. And so this gives rise to quite a rich phase diagram with, where you can have both first and second order phase transitions. Um, and um, as we found, there's actually other more unexpected connection, connections with other systems. So I won't show it today, but you find that the um, parts of the phase diagram actually resemble the phase diagrams you find in helium 3 helium 4 mixtures, so it's, it's, it's both boson fermion systems. And, and finally, there's the possibility of realizing more exotic types of pairing phenomena, which is the part I mentioned yesterday, which is the so-called Fulterfroel-Lakhmachinikov superfluid phase where you can have a sort of a spatial modulation in your uh, superfluid or pairing order parameter, leading to sort of a dense, a sort of a condensate that has um, spatial modulations. So, and so this is, this is something that's been predicted for over, a little more than 40 years ago, but as yet there's no sort of unambiguous um, evidence in the experiment. So no, no un unambiguous observation. So, um, okay, so basically, okay, so this is, this is kind of the basic Hamiltonian that I'm, that, I, that I'm considering where, okay, so you have, so this is the kinetic part, and here you notice, okay, so I'm just taking it, you have a simple quadratic dispersion where, where I al can allow also the masses <coughs> to be different for the two species of my lobe. Um, and okay, so here's my contact interaction term. And, okay, so um, for this talk, I'm going to assume that the, um, the spin-up particles is, is, is the majority particle. So I'm going to assume the, yeah, so the densities of the spin-up is always greater than the densities of spin-down. So that's the convention I'm going to use in this talk. Um, so one, one of the co immediate consequences of this so-called frustrated pairing is that um, you expect there's going to be a critical polarization at which you suppress this pairing and, and, and suppress the superfluidity, um, at, you know, even at zero temperature. So you just and of course, this, this is a polarization that you would expect to be a function of uh, interaction <coughs> strength, and, as indeed it is. Um, another thing to point out is that um, you, you find in this system you can have um, first order physics, so, so associated with sort of multiple um, degenerate minima in, in the free energy. And so the consequence of this is that you can, you can have a phase separation in your system between, say, a paired superfluid state and the excess sort of spins or in, in, the, you know, in the sort of polarized normal, normal phase. And so there, yeah, okay, so these, these are the, there's apparently sort of a lot of experiments basically at MIT, Rice, and in Paris on, on these kind of systems. Um, all right, so just to give you um, an idea of, of, of sort of the basic behavior, at least at zero temperature. So this, um, this is the mean field phase diagram for equal masses. Um, which basically gives you the qualitative picture. I mean, okay, there have also been quantum Monte, nice quantum Monte Carlo simulations which, which can really pin down, you know, exactly where these lines lie, but this, this at least is going to give you the qualitative picture of how this system behaves. Um, okay, so basically on this axis here you have, once again, this, this is the interaction versus polarization. So where polarization is zero, this is once again just my VCS to VC crossover on this axis. On this one here, where I have 100% polarization, that's just a, like a single component, non-interacting Fermi gas. Um, and then, okay, so then basically, okay, if I start from this side, 
What you find for very weak interactions, I only need a very small polarization to destroy the, su the superfluidity, and then you end up in, in, in um, a normal unpaired phase. And as you go further into this side, you eventually get a large sort of region of phase separation between superfluid and normal phases before finally um, entering this uh, a phase where basically the excess spins coexist with the paired phases here. So essentially, I mean, I mean, this can be done quite a, understood quite easily as a limit where you have where the, where these um, pairs are so tightly bound, they're essentially uh, composite of well, tightly bound bosons, but they're just coexisting with these excess spin up fermions. So it's basically a, a weakly interacting base spin <coughs> mixture on this side. Um, is this in the trap? Oh, sorry. Yeah, this is for the uniform system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this, this M is is it really this M minus M? This one. What, what M is it that one? Oh it, yes. Oh, this M over N. This one. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. This this is just the relative um, polarization. So. Separation, yeah, you have to calculate somehow for you. Oh, phase separation, the. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you get phase separation in the uniform system, yeah. You basically get it always there. Yeah. In, in the uniform? Yeah. In, yeah, in, in the middle section, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, it goes oh, yeah, all sure. the way down. All the way down here, yes. yeah. So yes. this goes oh, to yeah. exponentially to zero on this side, yes, that's right. Sorry, but I don't quite understand. How do you have a superfluid region I mean, when you have a unit polarization? Oh, okay, sorry. I always get asked this. this, this you, you should think of this as sort of a singular line where, oh. okay, if you get infinitely close to it, you'll have a superfluid, but of course, that actually at 100% you do. Yeah. It's a funny one. Just, just yeah. Similarly here, this line here, you don't, actually, you don't get phase separation. This doesn't imply that you have phase separation on this zero polarization line either. That's mainly if you go infinitesimally away from it. And if you add a particle to that, Fully polarized state that's going to pair up. Oh, yeah, and yeah. Make yeah. a molecule that's. Yes, so that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so any, any further questions? Um, right, okay, so I think that's. Oh, yeah, one other thing is that I've marked this point here, which is basically the point where um, phase separation finishes. So this is actually a tricritical point, as it turns out, where. Beyond this point, you have only sort of continuous transitions from the superfluid all the way up to full polarization, unlike in this region where it's first order, first order physics over here, all the way down into the BCS region. Okay. Okay, so the reason I point that out is that actually, actually you can use it as a nice way to characterize just how this phase diagram behaves. Say, for example, when I change the mass ratio, so here's so here, we go around, okay, so I'm taking this convention where I have, so R is, is I'm going to take mass. Okay, so basically, okay, so for a large R, that's going to correspond to uh, a light impurity. And this is, for a smaller R, that's like a heavy impurity. Okay. So, um, okay, so basically, by, you, can, you can track kind of how this phase out. So basically, when you, when you change the, the mass ratio, this, Essentially, what you do is you end up shifting these lines around. So if I if I sort of focus on what's happening with this point here, um, so with as I make the impurity lighter, essentially this region of phase separation expands, and then likewise if I make it a lot heavier, then this this, re this superfluid region sort of expands and then you know, potentially take over the whole day diagram in this kind of well, somewhat unphysical but um, in the infinite basically in the infinite mass limit in this direction. Um, so, all right, so I could say more, I think I might, if anyone So you say that if you, you have a heavy impurity, you see no phase separation, uh, it's, it shrinks. If I have a heavy, heavy impurity, phase separation shrinks, that's correct. Okay. I mean, I mean, I think basically the physics is that as you, okay, if I have a heavy impurity, I've, I've flattened out the dispersion. So therefore now, it, it, um, it, it takes less energy Okay, so the, the point about this superfluid phase is, um, it's sort of, I mean, if, if you get this coexistence 
region here. That's that's because it's basically how much. I mean, that's because the the pair is basically not very sensitive to the background excess spins. And it basically, as you, as you flatten up, the dispersion becomes less sensitive because it becomes easier to sort of move around this impurity and momentum space. Does that kind of make sense? So I can easily promote it to KF because it doesn't cost much kinetic energy. I can easily sort of promote it to the Fermi surface of the other species because it doesn't cost much energy because it has a flat dispersion. Does that make sense? So yeah, so it's sort of energetics of what you're doing, or how you're changing the dispersion and how that affects the kinetic energy costs of um, pairing. Um, right, okay. So now, what, I, what I'm going to focus on... Sorry? You basically have less mismatch, right? You're compensating the chemical potential imbalance by, uh, by the dispersion, right? So now um, you have more matching. I'm not, uh, when I say matching, well, I mean... I mean, you can have still... Okay, sorry. I mean, you can still have, like, a... Say I have this Fermi surface here, so it's my momentum distribution, and then I have like a small. I mean, you can still have a large mis mismatch between the two Fermi surfaces. In the no, but the point is that now because I because the dispersion for this is flatter, it's happy to just do. To do this. To just um, shift to higher momentum and just just follow the, the Fermi surface of the of the majority. Is that? Yeah, and I was thinking something else. I was thinking, you know, you, have, you have a, you know, large bandwidth for one particle, and then another, and then you know, the spin up, let's say, the spin down is much narrower ah, bandwidth. Yeah. And now you can, they have, they have different different number of particles, but the Fermi surfaces now match better. So, right. so I think there's a okay. less tendency to face up. Okay. Okay. Um, is there sure. some simple hand waving argument for uh, um, um, why uh, if you go to BCS regime where everything is under theoretical control and probably you can control everything, why the system is generically unstable uh, with respect to uh, infinitesimal doping? Because we, we can uh, think of uh, a, a, a slightly imbalanced system as if we just dope it with uh, mm -hmm. a spin. Uh, spin uh, elementary excitation. So we know that one spin uh, uh, elementary excitation is perfectly well defined. Okay. Okay. And, but for some reason, when we have a finite concentration of them, the whole thing collapses. So can you just uh, give an argument, if it exists, why the guys always collapse? Ah. No, sorry, before you answer that question, is this statement, uh, is this the statement that's made that the thing collapses, or does it excess spin just leaves the sound? Well, it's it's space space separation separate. means that you have a finite concentration, but it's unstable with respect to collapse into the state with finite concentration. Mm. Sorry, right, does so it collapse or does the excess spin just get, just leave? Well, the spin sort of leaves, but it, it collapses into, right. it'll, it'll, it'll the canonical it's, ensemble, yeah. <laughs> it's, it should be a drop. Yeah, it'll be like some, well, the spin will be... Which is spatially phase separate, yeah. the way yeah, the spatially is separated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's what I call collapse. We mm -hmm. perform a drop. Yeah, that's what I understand. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Yeah. We just, yeah. Yeah. just why, why, why do we have a droplet instead of just... Okay, so let's see, what would be the best way to argue this? Okay, so... Somehow they should attract each other, right? The, 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 spin, the spin ups? Yes, yes. yes. that's yes. right. Yeah, so there is some effect, or it's, it's basically very, it's repelled by the... Well, another way to think of it is perhaps it's being repelled by the pairs. Is an effective, I guess, if you like, Pauli exclusion. I, think, I mean, I think it's basically dominated by the Pauli exclusion between the paired state and this excess spin, which is sort of disrupt, disrupting this pair. Was it? It's, it's an argument about energy cost, or the question about energy cost of an interface, delta plus delta minus interface. If that energy is negative, then you will. I, I was just naming everything. Maybe if there if is that some. energy is positive, then well, I think. So I think the. I think the. I, I would say this is still an open question of whether what the really the phase diagram is at the very bottom. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is done with well, some calculation I speed, and, and I would say it's yeah. still an open question. Well, then there's a question about FFLA, which I haven't actually put in this paper. I mean, put in this figure at all. But, okay. but, it's, yeah. but the way to re one way to rephrase the question is like in type 2 superconductor versus type 1 superconductor is whether the interface where you're going to put this extra quasi particle, whether interface in delta is. Uh, 
as you mentioned in April. Priori, two possibilities are equally uh, uh, probable, but you yeah. need to do a specific yeah. calculation. I think, I think it's to a see. model dependent calculation, much like yeah. that's, that's at least my opinion. Well, yeah, I mean, I think. Well, it's essentially my question whether it's a model dependent or there is some I think it's a model like dependent. Kind of waving argument why it's all a model dependent meaning like you change meaning. something like dispersion no, no, no. relation or something. And I wouldn't. I mean, okay, I, okay. If, if you include FSLA, then I agree that it's not clear. But I think I would have thought if you ignore that, I wouldn't have thought that limit was model dependent. Well, I mean, it's just linear. This comes from BCS yes. theory. So okay. if, if you go above or beyond BCS, theory, yeah, you sure. can get other. So but if you're in like a BCS interaction, anyway. Okay. Um, all right. So what I'm what I'm focusing what I, what I want to focus on now is this high polarization high polarization limit up here. Um, so I guess what I mean, I, I, okay. In principle, it could give me a nice handle on, on the whole phase diagram because it has a, a lot of, uh, some of the, at least a few of the, tri uh, sort of the critical points in this diagram, so it sort of give me access to the topology. Plus, um, it would, um, so if, if I can, I mean, okay, as I'm going to talk about in the moment, it, it sort of allows for, for control of theoretical approaches w um, when, you ha when the density of one is much smaller than the other. Okay, so what, so basically what, I, what problem I'm interested in is the uh, single impurity problem where you have basically just a, a single spin down atom um, attractively interacting with a, a spin up Fermi C. Okay, so remember, so basically remember when in the absence of the spin down atom, I basically just have a non interacting Fermi C. And so now, so I add it, okay, so it's, it's, it's a non interacting case. And then now when I switch on the interactions between, between the two different spins, okay, so generically you'll end up creating um, particle hole excitations one or two <coughs> or many, you know, so sort of a whole superposition of these excitations generically um, that would sort of dress the, this particle. And basically now if I, if I um, increase the interaction like, well, often into basically the infinite limit of uh, the C type type limit, <coughs> there'll be a point where you, you form few body bound states where essentially, okay, so this is, in this example, this impurity just grabs one of the particles to form a pair and, um, and yeah, so essentially now, it, well, essentially now in this case it's changed its statistics. So what you would expect in this sort of more weakly interacting limit is that these dressed atoms would say in the finite density limit form some kind of Fermi liquid, whereas this limit you would expect sort of a, some kind of Bose-Einstein condensate or, or of these sort of bosonic now quasi particles. Okay. So okay, so basically, so one can identify as sort of binding transitions in this single impurity problem. Um, in a sense, this, the unbinding of this, this sort of paired state is equivalent to, say, destruction of a, okay, admittedly this is a single part, uh, particle limit, but okay, it's, it's more or less equivalent to the destruction of the fluidity and the high polarization limit. Um, and there have been some nice quantum, quantum Monte Carlo calculations, like, well, Boris and, and company, who are equal masses where, where they find, they can identify this um, polar and molecule transitions to be about 1 over KFA is, is 0.9. Okay. So, the, okay, so that's the basic picture. And what I wanted <coughs> to talk about was there's, there's, a, there's a, a variational wave function description of this, this single impurity that was first considered by Chevy and then, and then thought about by um, Combeskin co-workers. So, so the idea is now, okay, so let, let's take my, okay, so, what I, okay, so in the previous diagram, what, uh, in the slide, what I'm going to call my polaron is basically this, um, this sort of, this, this atom dressed with particle hole pairs. So not, not this state, which I'm going to determine some kind of dressed molecule state, but instead this, um, this um, <coughs> single atom that's been dressed. Okay, so, so generically what, I mean, what, what you can do is sort of, ex is write down the, a wave function that has an expansion in particle hole pair ex excitations. Okay, so this would be the, you know, this is just the bare interacting piece. This is one with a single particle hole excitation. This is with, with the two, and, and so on. On top of this, this Fermi C, basically. Okay. Um, and so then what you, what you will do is sort of just um, generically, uh, well, then you, you, can, you take the, the energy of this, um, this wave function 
reduction and, and minimize with respect to these, these parameters in this, in this location. So you would expect basically in the, in the limit of infinite number of particle pairs, this, this would more or less, and, and, uh, more or less uh, describe the uh, ground state exactly, and then we could interact to the Can I ask a technical question? Sure. So what happens if uh, actually the ground state is molecule, not photon, uh -huh. when it's decaying? So there should be some technical problem, right? Yes. Somehow a divergent series or something. So what would be the problem? Ah, what would be? Uh -huh. um, <coughs> there should be some inconsistency, right? Right, right. I mean, because I'm basically, I'm missing, well, I mean, okay, because I know I would, if I did an overlap of this guy with the molecule state, I would find I mean, basically, there would be connection with yeah, particle holes. That exists because uh, the molecule and polar feature different quantum numbers. Right, so but the, if the you polar, add... The, the overlap is a hybridization, direct hybridization is excluded. But once we know that polar is unstable with respect sure. to decay, we understand that uh, uh, an eigenstate should not exist. It's right. not an exactly. eigenstate, exactly. it's a metastable yeah. state. So That's right. Some, <coughs> so somehow, I mean, the protocol of uh, uh, improving or whatever should fail, right? Right. Well, I mean, I think what I would do, I mean, what I'd need to do is consider also the, the particle hole excitations and the thermos. I see. Is that what, is that what you aiming for? So I would need to consider uh, well, that. I know what, happen, what will happen in terms of the Green's function. The pole right. will disappear. But in terms of this approach, something also but will happen. If, if it doesn't, it's all smooth. It gives you even, it gives you a polaron solution in four. If you truncate the series, yes. But as long as the series is truncated, series. it's not yeah. uh, 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 an eigenstate. So I, I sure, sure. No, no, I, no, no. I, I think. Okay. Right. But let's I mean, skip this question because I okay, really we want can do to know the about answer what happens if you. Okay, if maybe, maybe we can discuss this yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Okay. So, to, uh, sure. So, to this brief function, you know, as you say, expanding in particle hole space. So, is that. Control and limit of weak interaction between right. Um, okay, so <laughs> okay, depending on what you want to put here. I think I think it's generally control in this case where you have a non interacting phase. I mean, okay, let's do this way. I mean okay, uh, maybe I'll go into this a bit more, but I, I think okay, yeah, okay. In this for this polar and wave function, yes. I mean with with, with Boris, I mean Oh, there is no small parameter, but what controls the expansion? Maybe it's related to my question because there is no small parameter controlling the expansion. But uh, somehow, the, 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 uh, when we have a well-defined polaron, it converges because that's what we see when we do diagrammatics. It's controllable. We see that high-order diagrams do not right. contribute, meaning that uh, uh, the terms with many particles and holes ca can right. be neglected. Well, I, yeah, I'll, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll just get to it in the next slide. So what's the reason for that? Is that phase space? Um, anyway, yeah. Uh, next slide. Yes. It's just I think it's the phase space. Okay, okay yeah, okay. but... Um, no, just, just well, to make sure, so my question is more elementary. So suppose I took a system where you have a spin-up for me, see, and you put a spin-down particle. There's some beat. Oh, in exactly. <laughs> 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 I, did, I, yeah, I didn't have any animation, but now I do it. That's yeah. right. With okay. some weak interaction between the downspin and the upspin C. Yes. Then in that limit, I, this kind of thing one would imagine is right. cool. So then the question is, uh, if you're near this special limit, is this, you, the hope is that this sort of expansion still captures this. Right, okay. that's right. So yeah, so yeah, I mean, I guess what's surprising was that you, you found this was even more or less accurate around unitarity where you wouldn't expect interactions to be weak. So that was kind of the, the surprise. Uh, I guess from my comment, uh, I think sure. that probably th th this has to do with the fact that if we have only two species, then it's hard to get three particles on top of each other um, because of the Pauli principle. I, I mean, yeah, I think uh, the Pauli the, uh, so, okay. so uh, this is why the higher terms are not as important as we might naively expect. No, but I wouldn't insist on the Pauli principle because it's this, uh, the, situ the same situation that happens with standard, uh, say, periodic polaron. We have an impurity mm -hmm. in the phonon uh, uh, environment, and the typical number of phonons is always finite. We can have a very strong coupling. But the phonons are not the females. That's what I'm saying. And we still have a finite, essentially finite expansion, even uh, with uh, phonons. Well, I think we have to look for another reason there. But I, I mean, in, in, I mean, at least this is what also one finds in neutron matter as opposed to nuclear matter, because you know, for neutrons, they have only two spin components, whereas when you have neutrons and protons, then you have many more. And this is what makes 
nuclear matter a complicated problem, whereas neutron matter is a rather simple one. Mm -hmm. Anyway, okay. Um, all right, so, okay, so I had, I gave him a, quick, a set of equations to solve, which are invisible infinite, but, um, okay, what, uh, as well, I'll, I'll show you in the next slide, is what you find is that the, if you just take the, the single particle, single particle whole, okay, single particle whole pair, so just, just to consider this, this part of the wave function, this is found to be a rather good approximation for the energy. And I think basically, if I, okay, so one, again, this isn't really an explanation, but at least it's kind of a sort of, perhaps an, it gives you an idea of maybe what's going on. Is, okay, so now if I take, if I, okay, so I take these two equations and I sort of rearrange them a bit here. So this is just, I rearrange these two equations, so here's energy, this is, this is my, keep an eye on this, this is my highest order term here. And now I say, okay, let's assume that I have a, that this, this part, um, in this term, <coughs> is, is, very, is basically pretty insensitive to Q. So I assume, this is, so Q is basically, remember, is the, the momentum of the, the hole in my, in my uh, wave function. So I say, okay, so supposing, you know, I can set Q to zero, at least, like in, in this part. So now I have, if I, and we, which I guess you might argue is reasonable because Q has to be less than KF, whereas, you know, K, which is the other term, is from, has to be much larger than KF because that's the, that's the particle that has to sit above the frequency. Okay, so then you basically end up with this, this term here, and now notice that um, this term is basically zero because because of this property, this is this is because this this wave function because of you know these fermions has to obviously be negative if you commute q, uh, q1 and q2. So this means now if I sum over q and q prime here, that's just going to give me a zero contribution. So you have this sort of destructive interference of these particle hole pairs. But I'm not saying okay. So then okay. So then the question might be okay. Why can you why can you, so, so I mean why can you assume that q is small or why can you assume it's insensitive to q? I mean, I would, I would say that um, a lot of it is because you don't have a Q dependence in your G, in your contact interaction. Like, I, I, was, I would think that in the case, say, where you have a Coulomb interaction, so say you have an electron gas, um, then you could imagine that there'd be quite, you know, if you create a particle whole pair, there'd be, you know, an attraction between those two. So, you know, then I would imagine this expansion wouldn't be very, very um, accurate. Because well, you know, once you create one, why not create multiple ones when, when you have this when you have sort of this uh, well, essentially attract you know now attractive interactions between the particle and whole pairs in your MEC. Okay, that's 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 just my vague idea of what's what might be happening. But um, we can uh, anyone else is free to comment. Um, okay. All right, so now, okay, so now that you can consider sort of other um, analogous uh, phases in the system, which, so one is, is the, uh, the molecular wave function I mentioned before, where you have basically, instead of addressed atom, you have addressed pair of, um, and you can sort of, um, okay, so this is considered by a few people last year, but basically you can um, do the same thing where you, uh, where you just take the, the, the the lowest, you know, one single particle mole per wave function here. So you truncate the series once again here. And so, and so in my in my case, I'm going to allow. Okay, so this has been considered for the case of equal masses and where you have just a zero, you know, molecule at zero momentum. I'm also going to allow this this molecule to have a, a finite center of mass momentum q. So so I can allow for the possibility of this FFLO phase where you have uh, pairs at finite momentum. Um, another thing I'm also going to consider is, is uh, a trimer, where you have now instead a three-body bound state. So in this, so basically now you have there's a two part, uh, majority particles bound to your spin down thermal system. Okay, here I'm just for numerical simplicity, I'm taking the lowest order weight function. <coughs> Although in principle I should also include a particle hole pair, but that's okay. That's currently working progress. Um, so. Okay, so notice this has to be a p-wave state because I have you know, two identical fermions here. In effect, you can actually think of this really as a, um, say, p-wave pairing between your two spin-up atoms, heavier spin-up atoms, mediated by a light impurity. And indeed, in the vacuum, this this kind of state is known to exist for above a critical mass ratio, about eight. Where so this is so basically this is where the impurity is one eighth lighter than the 
than the uh, majority atom. And, and basically, at some point, if you, if you make the masses even la uh, la uh, larger, there's this known sort of instability beyond 13.6, where essentially, um, the, um, okay, if you just do it in the contact direction case, where you have an infinite cutoff, the whole thing collapses. So, so basically, your, your um, trimer become, or basically your general, all your uh, sort of weak functions become dependent on the, on the cutoff. I'm talking of Yetimov's physics. Yes. Yes. Exactly. exactly. This, this is the critical number. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. So, oh, any any questions before I move to the beta diagram? All right. So now I can I can take these wave functions and sort of okay doing what I, like I did before where you minimize the energies and then you compare all of them. I can construct a phase diagram for the various different types of um, different types of states, ground states that I have in my system. So here now, on this axis, I plotted the the mass ratio. So remember, making it larger is mean, meaning where I'm having a lighter impurity. So this is this this line is basically this magic 13.6. Where beyond that, you have cutoff dependent results. Um, and then on this axis, I just have the interaction again. So this is a notice, notice it's positive. So I'm on the the VEC side. Of the of the phase diagram, so where I have a two, where I do have a two-body balance state in the vacuum. All right, so so basically, um, essentially for, for small small smallish mass ratio, so I get to continue going down to about equal masses down here. I just have my just have a transition from a polar ion to a molecule at zero momentum. You see, like like what was found in uh, at equal masses. But now, as I increase this, uh, or make the impurity lighter, increase this R, I eventually find that I have a region where the molecule acquires a, a finite momentum impact. So it has, you basically have a molecule with a negative mass. So this is what I'm denoting this FF hello region here. And then if I go even further, beyond that, I, you find that this FF hello prefers to bind another uh, particle to form this trimer phase that I mentioned before. And so of course, as, you, as I go out to this limit where I have, and this is basically heading off to the limit where of strong interactions, or alternatively, towards the vacuum where KF goes to um, zero. Um, you find, of course, this, this, this is about around eight again, as you expect. So we're in the primer to form in the vacuum above this um, ratio eight. Um, and basically. I guess the, re the reason for why you, why you have this um, FFLO state in the middle here is um, essentially because, well, as, as you basically make the impurity lighter, is essentially, you know, by making the impurity lighter, you're sort of making the its dispersion steeper. So it, it's costing it more and more energy to actually have this impurity sit at the Fermi surface, or sit above the Fermi surface, and pair with another atom and form a zero momentum uh, molecule. So eventually there'll be a point where it just prefers to sink below the Fermi surface, and at that point you automatically have a molecule with a finite momentum, just because, you know, of course this particle always has to sit above the Fermi surface. Okay? So this is kind of this is kind of sort of the basic physics I think that's behind why you, you get this phase as you make the impurity lighter. Um, so the what is the sure. this is um, on the BEC side, or is this where you have a bounce? Yes, that's correct, yeah. In the vacuum, yeah. yeah. Uh, I have two questions. One is, how do you go from SFLO to trimer? I mean, is it like... Ah, you mean like... Okay, I'm, uh, you mean like what type, type of transition is it? Or uh, like, is it like adding on another majority spin yes. so as to make total momentum zero? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. The trimer has yeah total momentum zero. Yes, that's right. And another question is like you mentioned that trimer has like a P wave symmetry. That's right. So I mean, if you have P wave symmetry, I, I guess that means that there can be several competing pairings, uh, several competing symmetries. So right. What type would be normally favored? You mean like other angular momentum, for example? You mean is that what you mean, <coughs> or or you mean? Um, I, I'm just thinking about you know analog to like a. Phases in helium three. Ah, super cool. I yeah. see. Well, I guess. I mean, okay, you're thinking about the orbital type of yes. uh, component as well. I mean, I think. Yeah, 
I mean, I think it's in the, the trine phase, the odd parity, I okay, guess it's odd and even parity. The odd parity is the one that's favored, if that makes sense. Well, yeah. In mm -hmm. fact, yeah. if you look a, li a little bit more carefully, you will find out that these trimer states, which you refer to, mm -hmm. for which the critical mass ratio is 8 point something, 8.2 yes. or 8.1, they also exist at larger orbital angular moment. Yes. yes. But yes. Uh, then the critical mass ratio becomes large. Right. Yes. So That's in right. principle it's possible, but okay. Yes, sure. It's yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's correct. Yeah. And actually also um, you might ask, why not a quadrant? You know, why not? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, why not you know, why not keep going? And I, I, I mean we did I think now there's, we did have a quick look, I mean, we didn't find what, a quadrimer, but I know there's been a recent work, I think it was by Van Castell, where they see just here, just above here, there's a quadrimer phase appearing. But okay, it's pretty, yeah. Can you have trimer that spontaneously breaks timer symmetry? Um, Okay, maybe it's an open question what happens at finite density. Actually, I don't understand the question. How can we break a symmetry with it in a few body, uh, in a few body problem? Well, the, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Well, the trimer has angular momentum. Now the question yeah. is, what well, does do all trimers want to have but, the same? Yeah, uh, so the question, yeah, but, uh, the question of breaking the symmetry, in my opinion, implies that we are dealing with a microscopic system. How can you Fine break a symmetry in a microscopic point. system? That's what but I But this is probably... Uh, yeah, I didn't know what it was it's So if trimers form a Fermi surface, then I would they say that the angular momentum is zero. You know, they feel mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. the But then you need to find that concentration. Yes, that's, that's yeah. what I made uh, if in, out the outlet. Well, <coughs> you all forget that the trimer state, uh, in order to form the state, you, you need a finite time. It does not happen immediately. And the kinetics of the formation of these trimer states is very slow. Right. Because, you know, we know from our experience, theoretical and experimental, that in order to form dimer states, molecules, you need finite time, three-body processes, like three-body recombination and so on. And then imagine that you wish to form a trimer state. You need many-body interactions. And then uh, the characteristic time depends on density. The flow density can be very large. Okay. So, okay, so in real life, which is happening in experiments, it may be that these trimer states do not appear. Maybe. Yeah. Can I ask a sure. simpler question? Really? Uh, so just so that I understand. So this trimer that you're talking about uh, has internal angular momentum one. Mm -hmm. uh, so it can be in three possible states: you know, one, zero, minus one. Mm -hmm. And then all, all these questions about what happened with Keller mini board, yes. many trimers, all the, all the angular momenta line up. They have only one internal speed or beta angular momentum species. They have several those kinds of questions. I, th I think, yeah, I think that's, that's beyond the purview of the single yes. thing that we're yes. talking about. Now. Right. But is it also that if you have a finite density of trimers, your uh, system will be unstable? You mean experimentally? Or experimentally. Yeah, well, that, yeah, okay, there is that issue as well. Yeah. I mean, I mean whether, how long how long it will be, yeah. From stable to what? what? And stable to work. You're doing a three body. <coughs> three body manipulation of the original atoms. Uh, or yes. even trimers themselves. You know, two of the atoms inside the trimer collapse into something deeply bound and the remaining atoms. Ah, this out. is true. This happens. It also takes a finite time. Yeah. For example, it's very well known that if you uh, talk about these Yefimov states for the mass ratio larger than 13.6, they are not really. Uh, states, they are resonances, mm -hmm. and, there, and, okay. and there is a finite time, and they're rather short to form these deeply bound states and so on. Actually, people have calculated that. For these universal trimer states, which are different from the Efimov states, I do not exactly remember, but it's also possible that the relaxation process is, uh, is rather fast. Okay, but that was a good point, because then Less trimers mean more equability. If you're after equability, that's, that's good. So, um, all right, so, okay, so we're going to extend the question, so I'll just move on to, okay, so just a question about, okay, so how would, okay, okay, 
I designed all these phases at the single body, body level, like how to actually distinguish them formally. And one thing is you can define sort of a, well, effectively, you could call an autoparameter, which is, okay, so for the, the polar on case, um, you expect that to have a non-zero uh, sort of weight, if you like, Z, which is just corresponds to this, the, the weight of the, of the bare component. Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. Um, and then um, in the molecule case, you could similarly define, so this is just like, like a quasi particle waiting for any liquid theory, for example. And in the molecule, you can define something similar where, for example, now you take the bare component of the molecular part and, and define, you know, define that component as, as, your, as your weight or autoparameter. So this would, would be expected to have a non-zero easy here. And likewise for the triangle, so you can define, define something similar. So, so looking at the, basically looking at the bare parts of these particles and defining you know, appropriate quantities there where, where they're non-zero for each phase. Um, and basically, okay, coming now to the transitions that in this phase diagram, sort of just touching upon what was talked about a bit yesterday. Um, you can, you can and somewhat think of these really as almost first order, some of these as almost first order transitions, <laughs> where in the sense that um, these, these Zs, these are, or these different states are sort of, I mean, well, there's a br an abrupt change in, in the Z, in this, these Zs at the, at the transition point. Or another way of looking at it is basically these, you have both of these kind of phases on each of the, each side of the transition point are sort of well defined at the transition. There's sort of an abrupt change between the two you know, different types of states at that point. Um, and okay, and I think and basically, I guess the reason really is that, um, well, what, the, what lies at the heart of this is, is the fact that you, this, this transition involves a decay of at least four particles. So, for example, okay, this is just a sort of a cartoon kind of picture, a very simplistic one. Okay, so here's, say, my, my molecule, my bare molecule bit here, here with the theory. And now, in order to decay to, say, a polaron state like here, and conserve momentum at the same time, I need to create an extra particle hole pair out here to sort of balance this momentum of, uh, of this particle here at the tiny surface. Okay, so that's, that's kind of the main reason why these decay processes basically go down at very, very, you know, basically go to zero at this transition point. The phase space for doing this is very small. So, and likewise, but what's interesting actually is now if I consider FFLA molecules, where I have, uh, say, a molecule at um, momentum KF, now, this can actually have a continuous transition because now you see you can just continuously decay into this state you know, could, with, um, without actually needing to do create particle whole pairs to conserve momentum. So yeah, so it's interesting actually how you can get these different types of transitions once you know you have this FFLA phase in your system. Okay. All right. All right. So finally, okay. So this is the single impurity diagram, obviously. So the question is, okay. So now what happens now if I if I have a finite density? So that's obviously has more you know relevance to the phase diagram and also relevance to experiments. Um, and okay, I'm going to attempt to answer. Part of that question. So, um, not, not, not about the trimer phase, but at least hopefully the other phase. So, um, other phases. Um, so, what you find now, okay, so now you take the equal masses case. So, here's the top part of my, my phase diagram, the high polarization limit here. Okay. Function of uh, interaction. Okay, so here, okay, so the polarized case, you expect some kind of, you, you find you have some kind of phony liquid on this side. Okay. Now, uh, what you find though is that if you try and look at where the tra single impurity transition occurs, it actually falls into, into the phase separated region in, this, in the phase diagram. So in other words, the single impurity transition is preempted by a first order transition in the many bond system. Um, and so actually, well, experiments done by Martin <laughs> have, have um, show that this sort of transition where you, where you, the pol well, where you lose the, pol the polar molecule transition does actually agree with this point here, this onset point of phase separation. Yeah. Okay. So now the question I would want to ask now is, okay, where does this? Can I estimate where this sort of phase separating region lies in my finite, uh, my my phase diagram for unequal masses? Okay. Uh, so very very quickly. <laughs> um, so okay. So basically, okay, I can. So basically, the idea that I can sketch up. 
for uh, the calculation, which is, I guess I want to estimate the onset of phase separation between superfluid and polar, you know, partially polarized normal phase, fluid, actually in this case, fully polarized normal phase. And so what, what I can do actually is um, I can assume, say, that the superfluid that I'm phase separating into is basically unpolarized, which is actually seems quite a reasonable, I mean, it's, it's tr roughly true in the unequal masses case, and it's, I mean, for the equal masses case, it seems like a reason, it seems so far a reasonable approximation. And, what, and what's, that, what's nice is that uh, it's, you can you more or less know what the equation of state for this unpolarized superfluid is from quantum Monte Carlo simulations. Okay, so I can take that. Um, and then I, then I impose constraints between my two phases that are phase separating, so I can have equal pressures, equal chemical potentials. Okay, so we're in the normal phase, of course, I'm going to take the pressure of the fully polarized state. So. And then what I want, because I'm looking at the onset, point of phase separation at full polarization, I take the point where the, where the energy to add a, a, a impurity just corresponds to the, I mean, sorry, the chemi yeah, chemical potential of the impurity just corresponds to the energy of adding one particle. So in other words, it just, it's just at that point where I want to add an impurity. So in my approximation, I'll just assume that it's polar energy, just to just at least get an estimate. Okay, it's going to be an overestimate, but at least it's going to be some estimate. Okay, so these are kind of the, this is sort of the general procedure. And then by, okay, implementing that, okay, so here it is. So here's the region of phase separation from this calculation. Okay, so as you find, um, once again, this polar and molecular transition lies uh, within this region for small mass ratios. What you find is you go to larger mass ratios, actually, there are transitions that, this, this transition basically lie outside. Okay, so there's, there's open questions about what actually you know, other you know, other questions about you know what what are these other other is there other kind of there's sort of physics between here and below but okay at least this kind of these kind of transitions don't uh, so these this kind of phase separation doesn't interfere with these single particle transitions okay so sort of in principle you might you might um, be able to hope to realize well, excuse me that's the yeah. then that the transition from uh, between FFLO and ordinary phase would be of the first order because uh, oh yeah yes. Uh, I think actually a lot of it's the second order. So this, this line would be the second. Yes, yeah, this one here, yeah. because it's a good, it's a roughly about kf. Uh, the, the but momentum. FFLO is it a polaron FFLO or a molecule FFLO? Uh, oh, this one. This is a molecule at finite momentum. Somehow yes. a transition from polaron to molecule is uh, of, of the first order. Ah, right? but it's but it's this uh, this physics I was talking about here, where you have if if the the momentums match, then I, it's just a sort of simple unbinding transition. I don't need any of these. Somehow I have a problem with quantum numbers, because you see, in terms of quantum numbers, because um, it, it's really important that we, we deal with the term C, so that we have two separate good quantum numbers, as opposed, for example, to bosonic uh, C. Mm -hmm. If it would be a boss condensate, we would have only one good quantum number corresponding to the impurity. Now we have two charges, which are good quantum numbers and which are just good quantum numbers separately. And in the case of polaron, we have uh, the charge corresponding to the impurity equals one, and the charge corresponding to the C equals zero. In the case of a molecule, we have both charges equal to one. So somehow these are two different. These are two uh, different states in terms of the quantum number, and I do not, how can we construct a matrix element mixing these two states? Well, I mean, I guess I kind of consider this as being sort of analogous to a normal unbinding transition mm -hmm. in the vacuum. I mean, I thought the point, I thought the pro problem with having Fermi C involved is, of course, then, you know, you, you don't often get these simple unbinding transitions. You need other particles involved. But here, I mean, I think it's just like like in the vacuum where you're starting, where you have an unbound pair binding to form a pair. We, we, can, we, can, we, can, we can talk about this, maybe. <coughs> All right. All right, so then, okay, here's, here's um, this is, this is where, say, for example, lithium, mixtures of lithium and potassium, which are, which are the favored atoms currently, that were, where they were roughly sitting in the space area. So, okay, it'd be interesting actually whether they could see sort of any, any, any of these kind of So in this diagram you're saying that you can see the transition from a polaron to a finite momentum molecule, but you never see the transition from a polaron to a zero momentum molecule. Yes, that's right. At least, okay, 
and this is this gray area. I mean, how reliable is that? I Can you imagine anything, that it moves ten percent left or right? I, or? Yeah, I mean, I would guess if anything, it's, it would definitely be an overestimate. So it'll uh, well, okay, up to here, it would be pretty correct because I'm using the polar run energy. Here, okay, it could it could move away, but um, yeah, but of course, beyond that point, you, you don't have a, mo a direct molecule. So yeah, certainly, I don't think you could, I can think I don't think you'd ever see a, a direct molecule at zero momentum to polar run transition. I mean, Still, I can reasonably confident about it. Still, if, if I had to bet, I would bet that the, the transition is on the first side. <laughs> we'll oh, this one? Yes. Okay, we'll, we'll discuss Yeah, yeah, we can. <laughs> Look, okay. uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, the question about the transition, but the single impurity level, or? Uh, the point is that oh, yeah. the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, what I know at the single impurity level um, would, would translate into the first order phase transition in the full sense. In, uh, the no, 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 okay. Uh, so the single period level, it seems very, at least, you know, as an outsider, I find it reasonable that you can have this unbinding transition with the second order. Uh, but obviously at a mini particle level, okay. there's a shallow state, there's breaks, translation, and variance. Right, then there are questions about what actually uh, the state it So who knows? It's sure. really complicated. It would be really cool. It's, it's really, if you, if you really go beyond just sort of statements about mean field theory, but you really ask what phases are there, there are many. Yeah, in principle, we could have many phases, we could have pneumatic rich, phases, we could have exactly it's huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's exactly it's still right. Right. Oh, But do you really see in your calculations that it's like unbinding? Oh, I see. Yes. It's a difference. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So, yeah, because z goes to zero, basically. Oh, I see, I see, I see. So this blue line between polaron and FFLO is what second or what are you saying? It's smooth or it's a uh, this one. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is this is I think it was generally second order. Yeah, from what we Yeah. I think there may have been reasons done here where it was away from here, but yeah, certainly around here it was yeah, that Sure. You I said it already that the uh, the Q that is picked by the FFLO state that kind of starts from zero at the ah. dash line to some, somewhere and goes somewhere else. That's right, yeah, so it starts from zero and then gray, yes, grays and then I think usually the sticks are chaos. Yeah, 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 around here. So what happens to the color on the residue of the C? It goes abruptly to zero, or what, what happens if I cross this line? To uh, this one? Sorry. The C, the color on C, the quarter particle uh, residue. Ah, the Z, uh, which, which line do you want me to press? I just, I'm this asking one. if I, I ask for the color on Z. Ah, this, this one is an abrupt here, at least at the single particle level. Uh -huh. But here, it, it goes to zero continuously, which is when, it, when you go from polar to epithelium. So how do you define the line? This one. Mm -hmm. um, how did I define the line? Well, I mean, just looking at, well, okay, well, okay that, that's one of the reasons why the line is a bit hard to define. But yeah, yeah, you sort of looked at, you just compare the energies of the two states. And, and saw, okay, basically, at that point, the, um, okay, yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's right. So basically, the, um, okay, okay, so I think there, yeah, so at that point, you, um, see where the energies basically are equal. Isn't it yeah. surprising that at, 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 at the uh, level of variational wave function, when you actually truncate it, you still see the second order phase transition because, uh, uh, you see, um, somehow these are two distinct states once you truncate everything. But I guess, okay, but the thing is, all right, we can probably discuss yeah, this okay. in more detail, but they sort of contained within each other. At some level. Okay, well, let me, let me we, can, we, can, we can discuss this. Uh, just one, uh, one last oh, yes. question. <laughs> so, I mean, it seems yeah. like within the FFLO phase, one can just adjust the Q just by tuning the scattering bank. Yes. Without, you know, Changing R at all? Yes. Could you explain how that happens? Like how you can just change the this scattering thing? Oh, you want me to? I, I mean, like the, the how how you can change the pair total pair momentum just by tuning the scattering thing. Yeah. Um. Okay. Okay. Well. Okay. Well. Okay. In some sense, you don't change the total momentum of the system. That will always be conserved. So you can always. Absorb the. I mean, you can make sure the momentum is uh, conserved by uh, creating a pre crit particle hole excitations. So the momentum yeah, itself yeah, is. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. I'm just talking about the pair momentum. Right, I mean, I guess it. Well, 
I'm not sure I understand the question. No, no, no. I mean, you yeah. think, I mean, you were saying that at the FFLO molecule boundary, Q is zero, but yes. you know, as you go deeper into the other side of the FFLO phase, Q will become acquire some non-zero number. But it seems like you can do that just by tuning the scattering length. So I, I'm just trying to figure, understand how that can happen. How how Q can change, basically. Yeah. You mean uh, yeah. <coughs> energetically or just? Um, I mean, okay. I think basically, okay. So what will probably happen in practice is, as you tune it, say in real time. Okay, you tune it to some point. The pair will still have the old momentum, but then it will decay to the new, the actual lowest energy momentum by emitting some particle hole excitations, and so so on. So I think. Does that make sense? Okay. Can I ask a more fundamental mm -hmm. question about the yep. FFLO? Why do you call it FFLO molecule rather than an FFLO polaron? Because we can also think of a polaron having finite momentum in the ground um, state. Maybe uh, right. what you uh, maybe actually it's a kind of terminological <coughs> misunderstanding no, no, no. that you have no, no, actually no, no. FFLO polaron. Because this, this wouldn't have this doesn't have a, a Z, this, this guy. It doesn't have a again. Okay, okay. Uh, could you please mm -hmm. remind? The wave function, so I really want to see. Okay, so this this is the polarizing. Basically, so this polarizing has is defined by this what well, so called order parameter, which is it has a non-zero uh, weight at this point. But in principle, you could also define a polarizing with finite momentum, right? Yes, that's right. But it, and then we see that the quantum numbers are different because in the upper line uh, we start with. Uh, uh, the charge of, of, of the term C is always zero. We always have a mixture of particle and hole, particle and hole, particle and hole. And in the bottom line, we, we have um, the charge one for the, uh, for the term C because we start with one particle, then we, we uh, have particle and hole. So but I mean, I mean, I think the thing is that in this state, you have a well-defined sort of single particle. Uh, right, and somebody was saying, saying that a polaron is contained in right. what you call uh, molecule. That's strange because the, you have an extra quantum number. In the, in the why, why can't the top one is firm and bottom one is firm? Bottom one is firm. Yeah. So I, mean, I, 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 I do not see how you can admix the upper state to the lower one just in terms of the numbers of operators. Oh, right, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, they're I different would need spaces. to have particle hole. Yeah, they're different. I mean, it's, it's, you can mix a molecule with a polaron if you just put in two particles in one hole. Yeah, yeah. I would just need That's to That's what she's doing. Extra, yeah. Because in 1D, uh, 
uh, there is no difference between bosons and fermions as we discussed yesterday. So in 1D, we do not have this sharp transition between a polar and a molecule because uh, we cannot distinguish the two. Of course, uh, yes. in 1D, weakly interacting bosons correspond to strongly interacting fermions and vice versa. Yeah, but it does, it, it does matter. The, the, the notion of a particle is, is, is ill-defined. So in Latin general liquid, the notion of a single particle is ill-defined. You can only discuss phonons, but not particles. It's only the property of the Fermi C as opposed to bosonic C of this Latin sure, liquid. Sure. When we can talk of both uh, particles of, of, of the C and, and the, and the yeah. impurity. So, yes, so, so these phases are really different. This, they are based on commensurability. Oh, sure. Yeah, uh, for example, dimers, uh, you need two equal concentration yes. or, or just some rational number. So these phases are really different. So I wouldn't just mix them with molecules oh. and your trimers. Oh, sure. No, no, I'm just saying that at least it's known... It's the same word but different phase. Well, you, you cannot have a low concentration of trimers. No, 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 no. I, yeah, that's true. I'm not, okay, I should be careful how I, but uh, certainly I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking of the finite density case where, you know, okay, so I could go all the way up here. It's fine-tuned. It should be, uh, it, this density should be fine-tuned, otherwise you will Sure. No, 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 that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's right. I agree. But, uh, yeah, I'm just saying, it's okay, it, it exists. It exists <laughs> in another system. So whether, whether it's also, it's whether... You're using the same word, trimer, for different objects. No, 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 you cannot, uh, you cannot have just a separate uh, low concentration of trimers here. It's the same if you just take the, your problem in one D with the finite, but not uh, that yeah, like sign up for and down being ten percent. That the sine of phase will not exist. I mean, is that your claim, Boris? Yeah, my, my claim is that. Uh, no, no, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's not like in superconductor. We call it pairing, but it's not like a distinct pair. As, as, as opposed to what was it. So we cannot have a single trimer in one D. That's my statement. So if you want an exact statement, we cannot no, so have a single trimer in one D. So what calculation you're saying for the single impurity thing fails in one D? Uh, 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 in one D, we cannot distinguish between a polaron, a molecule, a trimer, and stuff like that because the notion of a particle of, uh, 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 of the vacuum is not well defined because it's a Latin general liquid. No, no, this, no, but in this model, where there's one upspin species, which is preformed on like, and then there's a downspin particle, and the only interaction is between the opposite spin species. Yeah. I mean, what kind oh, of find it? Oh, 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 yeah, but no, that's the model. Yeah, but, but, but yeah, what, what uh, uh, also Borowski and Duriko were discussing was an interacting system. Yes, in 1D, if you switch off the interaction, it would be a special system. But once you turn on that. the interaction, it's a lot of liquid. It's not. Between the yes, 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 yes. Once you turn the interactions, with so, so some long range or few wave interactions. Just any interactions, like short range interaction, just change the picture dramatically. We know that in one D enlightenment the liquid, the notion of a single particle is still defined. We can. Yeah. Okay. We can look at the paper, but I thought it was just interactions between yeah. things. So just. I, okay. I would okay. erase. The bottom line. It's, it's misleading. I, well, I, mean, <laughs> I like I, the guys, I like the authors, but uh, it's something. Oh, right. Well, I mean, I, 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 well, I think he, he was asking the question. Okay. So, I mean, he gave a talk in Cambridge and he studied asking questions. The same question, so. It's an elegant physics, but it's different from what we were okay. discussing. Yeah. idea how the FFO uh, thing for, for uh, starting from s the single impurity level to the finite density somehow moves over to I think the BCS side, right? Is, is the, uh, uh, let's see. I, I might have been ah, right, wrong, but okay. I thought the FFO said it's, it's a sliver, it's maybe more on the that's right, the BCS side. side. The that's correct. Um, you side. mean you're thinking for, of finite for, densities? For finite densities and, and uh, equal masses is what I have in. Right. Ah, okay, yeah, sure. So, obviously, yeah, okay, so at equal masses, I guess, obviously, this doesn't exist in the it's, yeah. full polarization, yeah, so but that's correct. Right. So yeah, so basically, I guess, as you, well, increase the masses, yeah, exactly, it sort of works its way up and eventually works its way outside of the <laughs> phase separated region. Is that's that, yeah? Very complicated, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. It's, it's an open question, I said, yeah. Oh, I mean, how it, how it oh, actually how, does, oh, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah like, how it actually, yeah, sure. <laughs>
Yeah, no, 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 that's true. Sorry, I didn't understand the question. I mean, what was... He was wondering how this kind of phase of high polarization sort of connects with the usual picture of FFLO in the BCS limit for equal masses. Like how, yeah. Well, how does it, what happens as you change the mass ratio to this limit? Like how, should, how should I think of the FFLO phase? How does it grow, basically? Yeah, that's true.